assalamu alaikum all welcome to the nad scholars uh, webinar series and uh, today we have uh, adnan siddiqui and uh, arif sattar presenting demystifying uh, startups alhamdulillah this is uh, our 17th webinar for this year uh, all other webinars been very वेरी uh, सक्सेसफुल और मुझे मालूम है कि बहुत से लोगों को इससे फायदा भी होगा uh, खासतौर पे वो स्टूडेंट जो कि हमारे साथ होते हैं हमारे ग्रुप के अंदर और uh, मैं एक दो चीजें uh, सिर्फ uh, वो बताऊंगा कि प्लीज uh, अपने आप को म्यूट पे रखिएगा और अगर आपके पास बैंडविथ की कमी है तो प्लीज uh, कोशिश करिएगा कि वीडियो ऑन ना करें अपनी Uh, दूसरी बात यह है कि uh, बाकी चीजें आपको आरिफ बताएंगे लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस आरिफ आरिफ इज माय क्लास फेलो हमने एक साथ एनईडी uh, से 86 में ग्रेजुएट किया मैकेनिकल डिपार्टमेंट से और uh, आरिफ uh, आजकल यहाँ यूएसए में uh, बहुत सी एलमनाई एसोसिएशन से uh, वाबस्ता हैं और सबसे बढ़कर uh, इनका जो पार्टिसिपेशन है एन ई डी एन ए से और डी सी ग्रुप से एलमनाई ग्रुप से इट इज लाइक यू कैन नॉट बिलीव हाउ मच वर्क डू फॉर दी एन एडियंस एज तो आई वेलकम आरिफ सत्तार एंड अदनान सिद्दीकी आरिफ यू नाउ प्लीज गो हैड एंड लीड वालेकुम शुक्रिया सोहेल एंड अलैक्म एवरी वन it's uh, great to see people joining from all over the places um i assuming it's 9 o'clock there in pakistan and it's 11 o'clock right now in dc where i'm speaking from um and adnan who is going to be the the main presenter uh, of this event today he is uh, from um seattle so on the west coast side he's 3 hours behind us so it's 8 pm sunday for him aur aap logo ke paas mere khayal se sabah 9 baje honge monday monday subah और एक रिक्वेस्ट मुझे आपकी होगी कि आप लोग सब अपने आप को म्यूट अगर आपके पास कंट्रोल्स हैं अपने म्यूट होने का तो कंट्रोल इस्तेमाल करें और म्यूट करें दूसरी चीज ये है कि अगर आप इस वक्त एक बाय शो ऑफ हैंड्स इफ यू कैन ऑल हियर मी वेल जस्ट गो टू द पैनल ऑन द पार्टिसिपेंट पैनल एंड रेज योर हैंड आई वॉन्ट टू सी ऑल देंड्स रेज दैट दे कैन हियर मी एंड दे कैन सी मी सो दैट वी वॉन्ट नो यू नो वी आर एक्चुअली डूइंग दिस ब्रॉडकास्ट वेल I see Ahmed Safi, Adnan. हाथ उठाइए कोशिश कीजिए वहां पहुंचे इसलिए कि सवाल करने के लिए भी आपको यही करना होगा तो अगर सिर्फ सवाल आपको जब सवाल जवाब का सिलसिला शुरू होगा एंड में तो उसमें भी आपको हाथ उठाना होगा तो इसलिए जरूरी है इस वक्त अपनी एक्सरसाइज कर लें I still see a lot of hands are not there at the so yeah so just wanted you to know that if they have to ask questions they don't know how they're going to do that I see Imran Qureshi joining I'm assuming Imran Qureshi and Nisar are from the west coast as well right uh, assalamu alaikum hazrat assalamu alaikum yes we are from the west coast assalamu alaikum imran and uh, assalamu alaikum nisar as well wa alaikum assalam arif uh, thank you very much uh, soheil thank you very much yes Okay. It's nice to have see you. You know, all of us uh, seasoned guys here, as well as with all the people who are actually interested in entrepreneurship. So thank you. So with without ado, I'm going to introduce you um, to the main speaker for today. And when I say speaker, it still needs to be a dialogue, because many people are interested uh, from the audience into how to start something that they would like to start, and and when they talk about start and what is the difference between startup and you know. is it just starting a business or starting a specific kind of business we'll talk about you know discussions around funding what are the different stages of funding so we'll try to demystify sort of the life cycle of how a startup um, business whether it's in technology or or traditional business actually starts and sort of sustains itself and um, with that adnan's role today he's actually an indian who comes from um he's two years senior to us so don't want to date him but um he's from the batch of 84 we 
we graduated in 86 mechanical uh, from NED. Adnan Siddiqui uh, was two years senior to us. And he has been a perpetual um, sort of uh, mentor for me since the NED days, all the way when we were in, uh, in Oklahoma State University for our master's program. And then throughout in the, in the US, where has, wherever he's moved, uh, he has uh, stayed connected with. He's currently uh, the founder and president of a nonprofit, which is a self self funded profit it, uh, nonprofit. It's not actually funded by any angel and angel investor. He himself is the angel investor on that, and that startup is called the Startup Council. How um, sort of um, it, it, it's sort of ap apropos to the topic today. And his uh, site is, if you want to go and check it out, it's startupcouncil.org. Adnan is an investor, angel investor, technologist, philanthropist, and an activist. Um, Adnan is involved in 10 startups directly himself. He's actually a mentor for 10 of the startups, where are, there are about 70 startups registered with Startup Council. Um, he's involved directly in 10. Besides that, he's also um, a founder of a Pakistani nonprofit called Rast. Uh, you can also check that out. It's called rastfoundation.com. Rahe uh, Rast se Rast hai. Um, but it actually stands for um, his, her mother's name. Um, actually, it's um, if, if I'm not mutilating it, it's Rafia. Uh, Adnan, it's uh, Rafia uh, Siddiqui Trust uh, that you actually called uh, Rast, and um, it's in her in her in uh, Adnan's mother's name. And then he's also a senior. He was a senior director of um, quality in, for HP for quite some time before he start, started the Startup Council. And he's also been involved in Amazon Robotics and Logistics for a while. Um, so that's um, Adnan's background. And with that, I will turn it over to Adnan to actually give a short talk, 15, 20 minutes. And after that, we'll, I'll moderate some questions and we'll open, it, open the floor for questions. Thank you. Adnan, back to you. So Arif, thank you very much for, for the kind introduction. Uh, my uh, Rast Foundation is Rafi Anam Siddiqui. Uh, that's Rafi Anam Siddiqui, that's Rast Trust. Uh, uh, thank you very much. And, and Arif and I go a long ways. Uh, he has, uh, I always admired his intelligence, his devotion, uh, how he take things lightly, but very seriously. And he has been extremely effective in doing a lot of positive things and, and impacting lots of lives. Uh, through Arif, I get to do know Suhail, and I was very impressed how much work he has done or he has been doing for the last so many years and impacting so many lives. Mera uh, apna uh, journey jo hai, it started a few years ago, basically after 9-11, when I started looking, ke bhai, what happened? How did we go wrong so much? And uh, my conclusion after reading this history and all that was our glorious days were when we were leading the technology. And five, 600 years ago, somebody decided to take the marbles and go home. And that was the beginning of the, of the end for us. So to turn the table around, I think it was, it was important for us that we should go back to the, to the technology. So with that in mind, and since I was in with technology and I was in Seattle, uh, all of that kind of gravitated me towards uh, technology startups or say what I found out ke everybody that I talked with especially the young people uh, they all had great ideas about their technology startups but they were not taking the first step to start their startups so we started exploring ke bhai, actually what happened how did we go wrong what could have been done and what I found out that there was really no support system for startups. And the myth was that technology startups is a solo sport. And, and the reality is it's a very much a team sport. The sooner we learn this, this thing, the better off we will be that it's a team sport. And being a team sport, there was really no structured support system for the community members to get started. And because of that, so I decided to start a, an organization called the Startup Council. Let me share the slides with you so we are all on the same page. Bear with me for a second.
So Arif, what are you guys looking at? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen, but it's uh, in the full slide. It's not in slideshow mode. It's an editor. It's an edit, right. edit, edit, editor. Yeah, mode. I will change that. How does it look now? That's that looks better. Thank Much you. better. Okay. So we started this organization called the Startup Council. Uh, and uh, so, so just to just to set the stage, right? Uh, I would like this not to be a lecture. I really would like this to be a conversation. And I think Arif kind of alluded that earlier. So if you have a question, please raise your hand or, or knock on the door or say something. And uh, I, I wouldn't mind just taking a pause and, and answering the questions. But uh, I will try to keep the conversation short and then try to answer as many questions as possible. And then we can interact afterwards after this, this uh, webinar as well. So just a brief description, I think I've talked about this. Okay, basically, I'm a technologist, I'm, I'm a, an angel investor, as well as involved with this, several startups. Uh, I spent about 20 years with, with, uh, with Hewlett Packard as a senior director of R&D and quality. And then I was involved with uh, Amazon Robotics for a while before I started my own journey. So now, now the problem is, why are we here? The, as I mentioned, ke our objective was that the community hai, we are too far away from technology. Let's get back to technology. And when we started looking at that, we found out that the 90% of the startups, they fail in first. Uh, you know, as 90% of those fail for various reasons. And I, I did a lot of studies to figure out what the problem was. And then I think we have lots of lots of the answers. I don't think we have all the answers, but we, we understand the whole whole thing fairly well. And today we are claiming that if you work with us, uh, our organization, we can our success rate can be 50% 50, 50 or better. So that's a huge jump from 10% to 50%. Uh, we think pretty, we feel pretty good about it. The second part was I didn't find any organization that was helping the community in a systematic way. There are lots of efforts going on, lots of people individually doing a lot of things, but I couldn't find proper platform that was solely focused on technology startups. And, uh, and so we are actually trying to build a whole ecosystem for, for this effort. So once we build a platform and have an ecosystem that's supporting it, uh, I think just just by virtue of that, there's there's a huge uh, uh, possibility that you know our, our our startups will be successful. So that said, how are we structured? What we are looking, what we do is we provide guidance. But when we when I talk about the guidance, it doesn't mean give you will have one conversation. We'll give you the 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 check sheet and we'll send you home. Uh, we normally assign a mentor that works with you, depending what your need is, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. You and the mentor can set it up how you what you feel comfortable with. Uh, and I can tell you, give you more details about that as well. Uh, one of the things that I found out since I've been working, or I've been working on this for two years, that there are many people in the community, those who have the expertise to help. And the good part is that the 90% of the people when I talked with for help, they were willing to help. So the community is ready, that the startups are ready, but there was really no platform to join them together. And that's where we come in. And, and I think there's a huge opportunity for all of us to make a difference. So that is for the guidance and the mentors, then the resources. Uh, there are about 10,000 people that are associated with, your, with the organizations that we are part of, and we can get almost any technologies that you need, just tapping into that resource. And we, we, we are able to find the right resources most of the times, and we, we can help you with that. In parallel, we are also developing a network. So when you do a startup, you need people from the technology, those who can set up the, the stage for you, develop the product. You need mentors, those who can help you, of course, the founders, but you also need other supporting systems like the marketing, the accounting, the finance, the legal, all the support systems. And so we are trying to build a network of the community organizations, those who can help us. And then of course, at the end, and we will talk a little bit more about capital, what, what the myths are about the capital, 
when not to ask for the capital and when actually you should go for the capital to get the capital. So we will discuss this more in detail. And if you have any questions regarding that, please feel free to, to write those down and I would love to answer those. <clears throat> So as, as I said, what, what we have done is uh, we have made five different verticals in our organization. We have a database of skilled professionals that we can tap out for, and then we have the business partners that we have reached, we can, we can reach out to. Then as, as I said, we have mentors that, that, that we are developing a list of, of, and of course we have a list of people, those who can help you right now. Then in parallel, we are also uh, building a list of community angel investors and, and down the road. I have not reached out to any of the VCs yet to, to re for this effort yet, but I think down the road, we, will we should have access to lots of VCs. And with the VCs, I can assure you, if your company is at the right place and you have the right business model, you're doing the right things, uh, getting the capital should not be that difficult. Uh, and as, as soon as I say that, I want to check and say it's not a slam dunk, but it's not an impossible task. So it, it's very doable. And the third one is that we are also developing partnership with any organization that is working with th those who are on the same track with us. Uh, the more partnerships we have, the bigger the platform is, the more support we can provide to, to, the, to the community. These are a few of the organizations that we have worked with, we are working with. The Sharia Portfolio, Open Seattle, AMSET, ALMPG, MCC, Open Chicago, Open, you know, Jumpstart Chicago, uh, Muslim Hackathon and all that. And but as, as I said, if anybody else has any uh, need or any uh, anybody who comes into play with us, uh, we are more than more than happy to to entertain them. It's not an exclusive thing. Whoever wants to be part of this. Uh, and and again, I, as I, uh, I said, we are going towards the community, Muslims and all that, but it's really definitely not restricted to Muslims. If anybody from outside comes in, we treat them equally. There is no, no boundaries and no restrictions. So that said, now what is the basic development model, right? So once you have a startup, once you think about an idea, uh, more important part is make sure that you are solving a problem. And, and I, I do want to pause here and, and, and make a comment. If you are doing a startup with the share point of view that you want to make money, nothing wrong with that, but the possibility of success of that one is kind of chancy a little bit. So you have to come up with an idea that you really understand what the problem is and you are passionate about it. I think this is the most important part. If you come up with an idea that it's just okay, it, it, it seems like a good idea, let's go do it and it will make some money and we'll go home. Uh, that is gonna be a little chancy. So always come up with an idea that you are personally impacted with and you have passion about it. You understand the whole deal and, and you, are, you are willing to go an extra mile to solve that problem. I can give you a, a real life example. Uh, somebody has reached out to me for uh, an Alzheimer's reversal using the virtual reality. And I am involved in that uh, startup because my mom is getting impacted by that. And I can see the on down the road, she's gonna be impacted. So I have very, very personal interest in that. And that's the reason I'm in it. So whenever there is an, then an obstacle that something looks very, its situation looks pretty bleak and it's very difficult to move forward what I think about it is okay, it's gonna help my mom and that's the reason I need to go move forward. So it's very important. So once you have a passion for that, then we can take validate the idea. Is it big enough it should, it, that we have the technology to solve the problem? Do you have the team to work it out? And if you do that, then it's, it's a much easier deal and then you should move forward. The second bigger challenge once you get to, once you validate your idea, you look at the tech risk from the technology point of view, and the, the look at the strength of the team that you have. If all that passes, then the bigger part is uh, defining the minimum viable product or the, the new phrase that's coming up is minimum lovable product is 
uh, because most of the startup entrepreneurs and the teams, they generally tend to go boil the ocean. And it's very, very important to define the MVP as the narrow a product and for a very narrow vertical to get the traction. The finer this, the, the component of the MVP and the finer the market definition is, the higher chances of success you will have. And, and we will discuss that in more detail. Uh, what will it take to, to get there? And, and when the time is right, we will we'll walk you through the journey as well at the same time. Once you have done the MVP, you need to pilot the product and, and go to the market and close the cycle. So from idea to MVP, our, this is our secret sauce. What we want to do is we want to minimize your cash input at this time. And we do that by forming alliances. And by defining the narrow MVP, your development time is shorter. Defining your MVP market, uh, very, very fine market. That means you can go to market your, your, your effort in, in selling the product is, is not as much. The expense plus the effort is gonna be minimum. Once you have closed the cycle from idea to, to MVP to pilot, and sell the product to a few people and, and then now you have a complete business cycle. Once you get to that point, then you are a viable candidate for investments, depending how big the market is, how big the product is, how, how fast you wanna grow, uh, go for angel investments, and then furthermore for the VCs and all that down the road. But this is the key. If you cannot close this, this loop, the chances of success are, are gonna be slim. And that's what we work towards generally. Try to validate your idea, define your MVP, help you define your MVP, and then get to the market as quickly as possible. As I said, the trick right now is in, in your infancy is to stay alive. You minimize your, your cash burn and get into black as soon as possible. That's the trick. Uh, I don't know if you, how many of you know, in China, when the kid is born, they celebrate the hundredth day, we, almost as big or bigger as we celebrate the first birthday. And the, their thinking process is if a child survives the first hundred days, the chances are that the, the kid is gonna make it. And I think same thing is here. If we can survive the first cycle, then, then our chances of success are much higher. We will stay alive. Once you close the cycle, then is the time for you to decide. Uh, actually, I have right, written down here as the angel investment in the VC funding, but at the same time, uh, I am old school. I am of the opinion, if you can expand on your own cash flow and your growth model, um, that is the best way to go, but that is not always the right way. I'm, I'm open to having the discussion about the annual investments and the VC fundings at the right time. Uh, there are benefits to that and pros and cons we can discuss all day long. And it's gonna depend on, you know, case-to-case uh, -case basis. <clears throat> so this is how the path flows in general, right? Uh, the next thing is that what I encourage people to do is once you have all of this kind of in your head mind, lined up, uh, we should start with, uh, with your pitch deck. And in the pitch deck, you should always have a vision. And again, as I said earlier, if you are doing something to make money, then you should give it a shot. But I, I don't know how, I have not seen many companies uh, be very successful just because they thought it's a good thing to do. You have to have a passion for it and you have to have a vision why you're doing it. So you it always start, have a vision line, make sure you have a commission statement, one or two lines, very, very clear. You should be able to define your the problem that you're solving in about 30 seconds or less or two sentences in general. If you have, if you cannot do that, uh, then, then you have not defined the problem, problem properly, very important. Make sure your market is defined properly. You know what the market size is and what segment of that market that you're going after. What is the total opportunity? What's your target market? <clears throat> uh, technical solution, 
MVP, define your roadmap, make sure your team is solid. And that's where we can help you with that as well. Most of the people, those who come to us uh, for, as a team, uh, uh, some of them are from the technology side, so they lack a little bit of the business aspect. And sometimes the people come from the business side, but they lack the technical skills. Uh, the, the combination is not on, that's why it's very important to have a team. It's not a solo sport. The, the stronger the team is, so you should have people from all sides, those who are technologists, those who are business savvy, you should have people in the sales and marketing as well, financials and all that. So you should have a complete comprehensive team uh, when you're looking at the whole, whole picture. Then of course, a very important thing is the marketing plan. Uh, most of the times I have worked and actually I can I can see safely say that safely here. This group is mostly consist of technologists and, and we lack this area. And I have seen many startups, those they are very eager to build a product, but they have no idea how to sell it, how to market it. And that's where they fail. And and so having a, a supervision or a mentor or somebody who can walk you through the journey, get you ready for marketing with your good marketing plan, that's very important. Uh, once the marketing plan is, is in place, then you've got to have a business plan, all your financials or all that. Uh, financial plans has two aspects of it. One is make sure uh, that you understand where you stand. And the second part is when you go for angel investments or, or, or VCs, they should be able to tell you, uh, they should be able to see what you're, what, you're, what you're planning on doing, what you have done so far in the books and what you're planning to do in the future. Then of course, there's the schedule when your MVP is gonna be launched or your first pilot or your first version, when you are planning on expanding the market and all that stuff, the schedule should be in place. <clears throat> then of course, we have the business phases. Uh, any question up to this point? You can either raise your hand or So real quick, I'm just going to introduce you. This is the Startup Council. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization, so we don't pay anybody. Uh, these are all volunteers. So we sometimes we have a churn, people come and go. But uh, it has been, I have been very fortunate and blessed with that I have lots of very good people that have been helping us. Uh, we have about five or six people in our core team. Those who are cumulative about 150 years of product development experience. And I have a list of about 40 volunteers. Um, they, they, that increases and decreases it with, with time a little bit. Uh, as of right now, we, there are 70 startups registered with us. Uh, Pre-concept is about 336 of those. We put 15 of them on hold for various reasons. 13 are is still in the development phase and six are is MVP phase or the MLP, minimum lovable product or minimum viable product. That's our stat. I can give you a couple of quick examples of uh, the companies that I'm working with. One of them is Easy Shifa. It's a medical health uh, uh, problem. What we are trying to do, actually it's just starting in Pakistan right now. Uh, and our objective is to make uh, healthcare available to everybody. That's our mission and that's what we are trying to do. Uh, we have recently launched it. It's a huge market and it's growing. And today there's a huge gap between the opportunity between have and have nots. And we think we can bridge this gap with this technology. And we are not the only player in the market right now. That's one more thing that you will learn very quickly that don't stop your product because somebody else is doing it. Sometimes it's good to be, to be late. And I think recently I came across a book uh, and the title of the book is uh, thanks for being late. And, and you will see there's a history of people, those who came second, third, fourth, they became the star as compared to the first one. So, so that's one. Then we have uh, another company called Tax Hack operating from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, it's a very kind of simple, pro uh, simple product, very simple solution. People, those who pay, pay property taxes, uh, we have been able to automate the whole, whole journey. And with this, just with a click, you of, of a button, you can get all your taxes and the whole thing is done. Uh, from just one county in, in Illinois, in Cook County, uh, 
I think this number is, is uh, outdated. The current number that we have here is about 27 million just in Cook County. So it's a huge market, very simple solution. And the person, the CEO of this company is uh, Alia Kizalbash. She is from uh, Chicago, very passionate about it. She, she knows exactly what she's doing and we are helping her. I think this, this startup has, has a few great future. With that, and, and my apologies, I run through this at 90 miles an hour. Normally what I would like to do is, is have the floor open for discussion. Uh, off and on, I think more interactive it is the conversation is the better off it will be. That said, I will hand it over to Arif and uh, and the team. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Adnan. This was uh, this was a great uh, sort of an intro to us, but I'm sure there are lots of um, uh, there are lots of ver verbiages and and um, taxonomies that you've been using here that maybe not that easy for people to grab. So, I want to say this to people who are connected in participant view. If you want to raise your hand and ask some questions, then do it. Or I have many questions that people do in general start-up. So, I can do an icebreaker too. So, I can start a conversation. Because the intent was not to just do a broadcast, but the intent was to connect people. Because a lot of people have ideas. That's the reason why you're here at 9 o'clock in the morning on Sunday in Pakistan and probably at midnight in, in the eastern side of the US. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, can you hear me? This is Sean. Yes, Sean, we can hear you. Definitely. Sean, do you uh, want to actually turn on? I don't know if you are decent enough to actually share your video as well. Um, because we would like to see you as well. All right. Let me see if I can. And can um, and I will request Dr. Sohel to actually turn on the, the, the gallery view if it's possible. Yeah. Uh, Okay, now it's better. Thank you. All right, Sean, you can turn on your video. Nice to see you. Can you see me? Yes, I can certainly see you. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, everybody. So, Dan uh, thank you very much for such a nice talk. Uh, I was just curious, uh, do you have any example of a company that is that you have had uh, and they're not successful and fully functional? So any company that has done the IPO and has been, no, we have not. But yeah. we have about eight or eight or nine companies, those who are in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you also have to realize it. One more thing mm -hmm. that I did not mention, uh, okay, our vision is to have a zero entry barrier for a technology startup. We ask people to come to us just with a problem statement, right? So normally people, those who can get to that level where they are successful, it takes about three to five years to get them. And we are not old enough to, to do that yet. And the second, second thing is people, those who are coming to us generally are the second or third tier group. They are not very well connected. They don't have the context. They are just thinking about it. They're, they're just starting. So it's going to take some time. I'm very helpful. I'm very hopeful in by the end of 21, we will have at least a couple of companies, those who have gone through the journey and we'll be proud to share those with them, uh, with you. Uh, I can tell you the tech hack is, is almost on the verge of, of breaking through that barrier. Uh, we are in the negotiations of a couple of contracts and this is going to be one of those companies. They will not need any funding. And and they are should be in couple of million revenue by the end of the year. Actually, that's a great idea. Actually, I mean, it can expand to other states also, right? So, it's I really like that idea. Right, right. I actually, this, the idea is to to go national on this thing. Yeah, and and yeah. right now, today, I am sitting in Canada, and I did some exploration over here, mm -hmm. and it seems the, the this can be done in Canada as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for asking the question. I, I think, and also, um, that, now that triggered another question for me. How long um, your startup has been? It's been a couple of years or two, three years. How long have you actually started? What's the, what's the, what's the longevity of TSC so far? So the startup council. We started. My first conversation was 
early 18 with the, with the with the gentleman he came to Seattle one time and we had the first conversation sometime in July uh, after a few conversations it took us about a while and I think like October November 18 that's when we started uh, talking about it and then eventually by 2019 but that's when we first launched it that's great so, so it's been a couple of years, years yeah a couple of years yeah so I think it's good for people to know that, you know, where you are and uh, and Sean's question was very valid. So I have a few questions. Typically, uh, Adnan uh, is... Ek, uh, Arif, uh, there are two other one from Kamran Mirza and uh, Ahmed Safi later on. Okay. No, so I think I, we, I would rather have the live questions because I am representing the questions that, are, that have been there in the past. But let's have the direct questions. Um, so if Kamran was earlier, we can have Kamran started. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, Arif and uh, Adnan Saab. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, and give us some more details on the healthcare uh, uh, initiative that you have uh, in Pakistan? I want to understand. And the reason I'm asking this question is uh, I've been in healthcare, IT, technology business for the last 30 years. Um, I've done a number of uh, hospitals, uh, outpatient clinics, um, medical office buildings, uh, design, uh, technology deployment. So if, uh, if I can be of any assistance uh, in, in the mentorship or at least guidance, uh, I'd like to um, you know, uh, put myself out there. That is, that is absolute, that is fantastic by the way. I mean, even before Adnan says that, because uh, you know, Adnan's organization is about connecting, it's sort of a network hub for not only the demand side, but you are going to be a huge uh, sort of player for this, the uh, for, for the supply side. So you can actually play that role of what Adnan was talking about as an expert. Adnan, you can add to that. Yeah, uh, Kamar Sahib, thank you very much. I really appreciate the help. So let me answer this thing in two ways, right? What are we trying to do? And then uh, walk you through a little bit of the journey uh, normally startups ke hota kya hai, what they go through, right? So first thing is ke not only in Pakistan, but globally, there is a huge gap in healthcare. People, those who need help, and it's being considered, I mean, being treated as it's a, it's a privilege. And the reality is healthcare is not a privilege. Healthcare is a right. Every should have, everybody should have access to it. And so what we are trying to do is we are trying to commoditize the whole healthcare system. So if you have an app and you use our Easy Shifa app, and if you need some help, you just go find a doctor, click on it, and the doctor should be available to you right away. You can have a video conversation. The doctor can tell you, I can see your vitals. And I'm talking futuristically, right? All your vitals from your, your device that you're wearing is on going to the phone. We know what your vitals are. We know what your history is. Doctor can tell you right away, this is what you need to do. We set up an appointment with the lab. Your lab is done and the pharmacy delivers the medication to you. I, I don't know why we cannot do this today. Technology is available. We just need to make it marketable. So we have launched it in the state, in Pakistan. We are coming up with slow, few learning curves. One of the examples that we started was with was uh, we set it up for the doctors. After three months, we found out it's really not the doctor we need to talk with. We need to talk with the doctor's assistant. He or she's the one who is going to set up the appointments and hook, up, hook them up with the doctor and all that. So these are the learning curves we are going through right now. The journey that the startups normally go through when I the, 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 the CEO of the company reached out to me, uh, they wanted to boil the ocean. And so it took me about three months of conversations almost once a week to narrow their vision down to one scheduling solution. And I wanted them to start with one mohalla per se or one township. They wanted to start with Pakistan, Middle East, England and USA and, and Australia. It took me a lot of effort to narrow this down and say, okay, just to start with one, close the loop. Once you have the cycle completed, then it'll be an easier journey for you. So right now we are in, the, so from that, uh, Easy Shafa, we also came up with another app called Hava, that's for pregnancy, pregnancy management. 
Uh, Pakistan is one of the third or the fourth in with infant mortality, and we are not counting the the, the mortalities of the mother during during the the pregnancy or during the the childbirth, the delivery period, right? So the opportunity is definitely there, and and I am working with this with the, this passion that you know, healthcare is not a privilege; it should be a right, and everybody should have it. And not trying to make a political statement it's in the states. I know it's a hot button for for a lot of us over here. Uh, I really personally feel as as a human being, that's the right thing to do. But I will definitely write down uh, Mirza Sab your name, and and let's connect afterwards and see what how we can collaborate. Where are you at, by the way? I am in Southern California, but uh, recently okay. I was engaged uh, with the Stanford at Adult Hospital. I was the program mm -hmm. manager there, and I deployed. It's one of the most advanced campuses or hospitals in the world, uh, just got open last year. However, I do agree with you. The, the things that you were just mentioning, which is the use cases, which may be very different in Pakistan as compared to the US. What yeah, you yeah. need to understand is what is missing in the Pakistan link where you're deploying the solution. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the key. And that's right. the key. It may not apply here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but uh, you have to kind of take a look. Recently, for example, um, I was looking at Dubai.com, which is another uh, kind of startup right. that just got funded. And um, it, their model is very different than the Amazon uh, pharmacy, uh, but it's addressing the need of Pakistan where there is a lot of, uh, you know, third grade and second grade and uh, medicine that, that uh, you know, get, get sold to the retailers and then ended, and end up with people uh, uh, and it should not. So now what they're doing is directly working with the, with, with, with the large pharma companies and their product is directly being delivered straight to the people. So I think it, it addresses a weakness in the link and, and that's the yeah. key. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. Great point. So uh, I think, uh, thanks, uh, Kamran Sahib. Um, Ahmed Safi had another question, I think. Uh, Ahmed, um, do you want to go ahead? Yes, uh, I'm here. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Wa alaikum assalam. Good to see you. Uh, Adnan Sahib, you're taking time out. And it's uh, really great to learn about this uh, TSC organization. I had a, a couple of questions, actually three questions. But if Arif uh, Sattar allows me to club them all together in one go, so that uh, then he can. Have no, uh, his uh, Emma, 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 go so. ahead. I have a you you uh, yeah. you know I have a soft corner for you, man. So go there ahead. You go. Thank you. <laughs> you don't admit those things, you know. In you know in public, though, you know. <laughs> Please be careful. Okay. Uh, so Adnan Sab, uh, first of all, I uh, uh, you know thank you for being here. Congratulate you on this initiative. The, the thing that I have is, one is the, the question about um, the whole process itself uh, of uh, the startup. You said going late to the market is okay. Sometimes starting late is also, you know, one is probably uh, planning and Arif has already started smiling. If somebody is, you know, is planning their retirement, you know, what to do and they have some ideas and they want to, you know, go into that. So it's not that the product, Ahmed, we are having issues with your audio. Uh, if you can... The guy who's bringing the product. Hello, Ahmed. You may want to drop. Uh, you may Hello? want to drop. Ahmed, you may want to drop your video and just keep the audio because you're right, having a cool. bandwidth issue. Let me see. Okay, is it somewhat better or? Y yes, better? it is. Let's yeah, continue, please. Okay. So I was saying that uh, I had that idea and then, uh, you know, to uh, get your thoughts about it, that if you start late. Um, the other thing is that uh, you said, uh, Anand Saab, that it's not a solo uh, sports, it's a team sport. So even for the new starters, you know, even young starters, usually the idea developed is developed by one person. And the, the thing is that how to get that team how to get that, uh, you know, with the, with the same chemistry or that, that may be another step, you know, how, what, what your recommendations are for that, you know, I might be sitting in a corner of my room and, you know, thinking about a great product or something, what team do I need? How do I, you know, what I, what do I need to do that uh, to get that team? That's one thing. 
the other thing is that uh, for your services uh, tsc uh, first question you know like as soon as you see organizations like that are there any charges service charges for that are there any you know plans that like incubator firms you know when you they, you incubate you basically pay back and stuff is there something like that are there any associates um in pakistan for you are there any offices for that or like sit people sitting there doing that uh, that i would like to know and third thing you know most important is um, alzheimer re re reversal you just uh, made that you know said that in passing but maybe very very important to some of us maybe you know like uh, who have uh, you know patients like that so this thing is is very unique you know i heard alzheimer re reversal that's uh, you know it's a ray of hope all of a sudden you know because that's something that we all want to know so what kind of uh, is there a, a, what's the technological uh, you know advance in that and what are we you know what kind of a startup is is there and um, just want to know the idea, idea that they, that you are doing or how soon will it be available thank you very much sorry long uh, question but you know not i took the notes and unless you've already taken okay. the notes and you are you're cool with it you can go ahead <laughs> um otherwise i can so, paraphrase so I, that so for I, you so i counted four questions yes so, so, okay <laughs> i was right. trying so, to sneak in one you know without letting you course, know but... of course of course <laughs> i think one, one of them was really not a question it was more about uh more about an interest and right, and right. sort of being a customer for that product but mm -hmm. the other one so actually so, so let me start with the first one when i said the late Uh, i did not mean to to uh, i was not addressing people like myself uh, uh so far ahead in the age i was more talking about the technology if somebody has already come up with the technological solution for a problem that does not necessarily mean that's the end, end game so uh, actually sometimes you are better off uh being in the second or the third wave the the chances of success are higher you may not get as big a pie but in generally when if it's a 20 billion dollar industry and you get 2 billion out of that most of us will be very happy and i think that is the, there's an example of that just wanted to add in the technology the web search industry if you remember alta vista and web crawler were the first ones before google was even there and you know there is no name other than google in that space right so yeah and and actually there is a long list of of uh, tech, uh, companies and in industries where the the first person who jumped into the castle died and the second and the third wave made it and historically that said this has been proven many a times the second part is somebody who comes in as a team right so i'll i'll give you an example somebody called me about about almost a year ago and he mentioned uh, he was making kebabs at home and it was very difficult for him to manage the kebab masala and all that stuff and looking at the recipe on his mobile phone at the same time so he thought if he could use an a, an augmented reality wearing the glasses and it shows him the recipe at the same time while he is cooking it can solve the problem and we started having a discussion and what we reached to is industry people those who are doing the service and the maintenance and all that stuff there's a huge market for those so 6 months later three of us uh, i included couple of people in the group those who were familiar with the technology we bring them in and now we have a startup called the anak anak means like the chashma right and and that's what we have launched and we have found a great opening in in industry and we are getting a great reception so uh whenever you have an idea uh talk with people discuss it with the right people and try to form a team as quickly as possible and and we can help you with that uh, and most of us are i, are I think i think the, yeah so i think the what uh, what ahmed's um question was is that if you have a group that is interested in similar things but somebody who actually was the had the nascent idea was who had the idea who was the idea maker they sometimes have this question of intellectual property and then you are the boss in some ways what do you think about intellectual property in general in these kind of things so uh, this is i'm going to give a regional answer uh, for this one if you live in midwest in america oklahoma texas nebraska you know the ohio illinois pennsylvania 
if you live there, you're going to guard the IP with your, with your life. But if you're on the West Coast, majority of the people, they don't give a flip about the IP. Uh, I, ideas are dime a dozen. Everybody has one. Does not matter. In a startup, so here's the key. In a startup, idea is not a big thing. Technology is not a big thing. These two cumulatively is responsible for about 60 to 40 to 40 to 30 percent of the whole effort. 60 to 70 percent of the effort is in execution. If you can make it happen, then you are successful. You can take a bad idea or an average idea and make it successful. Or if you cannot deliver it, a great idea, great problem, you can sink it. So IP itself it did, and again, this is very personal opinion. Uh, I don't put much. And, and another example I tell you, I worked for HP for 20 years and uh, as a senior director, every time I call the lawyer and say, hey, I think we are infringing on somebody's IP. HP is a $120 billion company at that time. The, most of the times the lawyer just smiled at me and said, don't worry, we'll take care of it. What that means is somebody like me from outside HP, I have a zero chance of fighting my IP against HP or Amazon. So don't waste your time, money, and energy. Save your money, get your product out, build the momentum. Once you have the customer, you have everything. Thanks, Adan. Anyone else? I think Thanks, I, I, do, uh, I, I do have another question that was asked, and, and I, my apologies, I should have explained that earlier, uh, about the uh, Startup Council's charges. Uh, startup Council, as I said earlier, right, our mission is to build an ecosystem with zero entry barrier for te community technology startups. With that, we don't charge anything for our services and we don't take any equity in the business. That said, people, those who get involved with the start startup, you have to negotiate your contract with them. Somebody who is coming up as a technologist, somebody who is coming up as, an, as a mentor or somebody coming up as a business you have to, we can help you negotiate the contract. We want to make sure nobody gets to take advantage of anybody else to the best of our ability, but we don't, we don't take anything as far as uh, equity or, or cash is concerned. That said, uh, businesses, those who get involved with lots of businesses in marketing, accounting, lawyers, and all that, we have negotiated the contracts with them that until the company goes into black or start making money, they will provide that service at cost. Whatever it costs them, they will give it to that, give it to us or, or our startup. Once the company goes into black and start making money, normally the pie is big enough and they are generous enough to go share the pie with the people, those who helped them in the beginning. So I not on, that, on that uh, yeah, I, I, to Amaz's question a little bit more. So when you assign a mentor, which is, you know, you had, these five verticals that you talked about, business partners, uh, subject matter experts, and the mentors. I'm assuming the mentors themselves are engaging with, you know, with, you know, pro bono initially, and they are not charging any money. Correct. And once they verify that this entire, pro you know, the project or, or product is viable, then they would engage in, in, in by talking to them or even trying to arrange funds. In some cases, the idea might be great. The funding might not be there. In some cases, they might have some funding and the idea. And so it all depends on how the team works with the mentor and takes to the next level without any money being a barrier at that start. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Uh, so uh, let me take an example. Uh, and and Kamran Sahib, I'm going to, uh, my apologies, I'm going to use you as an example. So Kamran Sahib just offered his services that he wants to help Easy Shifa. Right. At this point of time, he's going to come in he will help them whatever in whatever capacity, however he can, they build a relationship with them. Three months later, CEO, CEO will come and say, uh, Kamran Sahib, you did a great job. We need your help. You want, we want, you'd like you to stay with us for an extended period of time. And for that, we can offer you X, Y, and Z. They can give you some equity. They can start paying you some cash, or they can give you a mixture of whatever that comes. And, and they can negotiate the contract and we will help them negotiate the contract. That's great. Thanks. One more question from Imran Qureshi. Hi, Imran. Salaam You can you can turn on your mute. Turn on your audio. 
Thank you, Nan Sahib. Thank you, Nan Sahib. Thank you very much for taking the time. You know, this is very interesting. Uh, two questions. First, I think you answered in terms of how do we engage you or how do we reach out to you. Is there um, some kind of a guidance in terms of what sort of ideas somebody needs to have for you guys to look at? How do you validate those ideas and basically have certain discussions um, you know, like what is the stage of the business you're looking at? Is it an idea that uh, is just in somebody's mind? Like right now, I'm looking at an idea where Pakistan, if you look at Pakistan, there are multiple universities putting out a lot of graduates right now, but there are hardly any jobs there. So we are looking at uh, taking those graduates and putting them into freelancing. And people have done certain amounts of experiments or engagements with these candidates and they have launched them into freelancing. And they have been, I would say, pretty successful in terms of getting people, you know, about 50,000, 60,000 lakh rupees a month starting out. And this is basically into web development, logo making, graphic artists, things of that nature. So I'm looking at that and I'm just basically curious, how can I basically take this idea forward, curate it with your help and basically say, you know, this is the idea that was kind of very rough, but at the same time, this is what the MLP or the MVP would look like in the future. You know, so basically collaborating with you, getting a mentor and things of that nature. All right, and and, and uh, the, uh, if I get your name right, Imran Khan, right? Imran Khan. Yes, Farish sir. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, I really appreciate you what you're doing for the community. And uh, first step is acknowledging that we do have an issue. Once you acknowledge the problem, then then we can solve it. Uh, let me step back a little bit, right? Uh, and again, this is my very personal opinion. I I don't know if people share this with me or not as a community muslim community in the states and a muslims across the world we don't know how to get organized mm -hmm. we lack that discipline uh, especially lots of pakistanis we are very individualistic i can conquer the world but when it comes to setting up an organization and do systematically and knowingly follow somebody for the right reasons, that is kind of rare. So that said, uh, I am totally open to more people trying to establish the organizations. If nothing else, we will learn how to organize ourselves. What you are working on, there is a skill set that people have, and there's an there's a market need that needs to be fulfilled, mm -hmm. and that gap is always there. Yeah. How do we make it frictionless? And I think the opportunity is phenomenal. Pakistan is the sixth most populated country in the world. We have great human resource. All we need to do is just polish the, the, the skill set a little bit and, and deliver it. Right. It does not have to be in Pakistan. It can be global service. Mm -hmm. I don't see any reason why not. Mm -hmm. I think the opportunity is phenomenal. If you want to help as a community, if you want to step in and do as a as a some an opportunity to make some money and be established and recognized and all that, all of this is possible in this space what you're working on, and uh, you and I can take it offline, and yeah. have a discussion and see how we can be of uh, be helpful. Okay. And, Definitely. And Adnan, uh, fortunately, Imran, um, he's also an Indian uh, from the electrical badge um, of the same year as I. And mm -hmm. uh, he's worked great. at Cisco. He's in San Fran. So he's in the same time zone as you. Oh, great. Awesome. Awesome. Where are you located? G. Where are you located? Uh, I am in Seattle, but right now I'm visiting my brother in Canada, in Edmonton. Okay. Excellent. Hi. Um, so uh, before, we, before we go to the next question, I think um, Emma reminded me in the text that can you actually uh, talk about the Alzheimer's solution, uh, a reversal solution that you are talking about? Because that that question was not addressed. His fourth question. 
All right. I, I thought he only had three passes. <laughs> All right. So uh, Alzheimer's is uh, what we are doing is actually I can show you my VR gloss. So here is my VR gloss. And what we are building is. Uh, so if you think about it in the neural network, right, the brain has a, a circuit defined. If I want to pick up a glass and take a sip, my brain knows how to pass the signal from one side to the other. At certain age, those signals start to get blocked, and the communication stops. And I can pick up the glass, and and I forget. Okay, what do I do next with this thing? So, by doing some mental exercises that we have designed for for on on uh, uh, a VR solution, uh, what it does it it forces the brain to read out those those circuits. And brain has the capacity to do that, and it has been tested. We are in the testing mode right now. Uh, the company is looking for some initial seed funding to get to that point. Uh, and we are having those discussions whether uh, they should or they should not, or we should bring somebody else in. Uh, but where technology wise, where we are is we have a product, we want to test it. Once we have the results, once we have the results MVP proved, then money will is not going to be a problem. So it's going to take a few months, and hopefully we'll get there. I have a question. Uh, Seth, Abish, Abish here. Uh, so can you introduce yourself, uh, Seth? Um, yeah. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Tabish Anis. I'm a graduate mechanical engineer from NIT in 2018. <clears throat> And I've been associated with identity scholars since then. Uh, uh, I think Ahmed Safi Saab asked a question uh, in which he asked, uh, what kind of ground resources uh, do you have uh, in, uh, associated with your startup councils here in Pakistan? Because uh, there are some uh, difficulties, some hurdles, uh, registering a company, expanding it, uh, these kind of uh, things. So I would like to know about that uh, from Mr. Adnan. Thank you. So uh, a startup council, actually, we don't have any physical location anywhere in the world. I mean, I'm, I'm based out of Seattle. So uh, per se, if somebody asks me, where are you from? I, I tell them I'm from Seattle. But the reality is my board members are uh, in Seattle, California, Chicago, uh, Florida, uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, all scattered all over the place. Same goes for the volunteers. They're all scattered all over the place. And whenever we have a need in a certain area, we just gravitate and go help them. Uh, that said, uh, the, uh, I think uh, Kamran Sahib alluded that, that sometimes when you go to a regional area, which I am very familiar with, developing product for Hewlett Packard across the globe, uh, you have to be sensitive to the local needs. And so that said, if there is a need in Pakistan to establish an office, uh, we can look into that. I, I have a location, uh, Ras Foundation that we run. This is this is the house that I grew up in. Uh, we converted that house into Ras Foundation from where we run the foundation plus the Ras schooling system. Uh, if we need to establish something over there, we can we can very easily do that. Uh, up to this point, there was no need for us to do it, but if somebody somebody needs that help, we can do that, or we can I can work uh, talk with uh, Dr. Suhail as well and see what resources he has and how to partner with him to, to take that initiative. That should not be a problem. Uh, Adnan Sahib, this is Tabish, who is our Pakistan ke, one of the directors of NED Scholars. Ke. Oh, great. This is our back generation, which we will have to take care of them, and we will have to take care of them. So, this is the generation. Perfect. So, he is one of the beneficiaries who has now become a benefactor. Absolutely. Great. Well said. Great. And it's such an honor, Tavish, to be to be in, in touch with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, hi, this is Nisa. Uh, Nisa, go ahead, please. Nisa, Nisa. Any, other, any other person from Pakistan who wants to ask a question before I move on? No, no, Nisa, you uh, uh, If there are no other, uh, uh, since uh, you have the mic, go ahead. Uh, um, and, and, and these are the reluctance, right? Uh, the idea that you might have um, 
I hope nobody will laugh at it, but I will talk about it anyway. You know, in Pakistan, our Pakistan, the biggest problem is, as you said, Adnan Sir, you have to find a problem. You have to find a problem. You have to find a problem. Then you go about uh, trying to find a solution for it, right? Karachi, uh, or Pakistan, in general, everywhere, Karachi, Pakistan, in general, there is an energy crisis. So, for a long time, I was thinking that कैसे छोटे लेबल पर सोयल से मैंने काफी दिन पहले बात भी की थी एंड आई ऑलवेज उसमें के घर में छोटे से जनरेटर किस तरह से उसका एक जो आइडिया है जो मेरे बारे में बहुत पहले बात करते थे किसी चीज की कि एक स्प्रिंग सिस्टम है दो दो तीन आइडियाज है कि स्प्रिंग सिस्टम है आप अब उसकी कैपेसिटी कितनी होगी दैट्स अ टोटली डिफरेंट थिंग कि अगर उसको मैन्युअली घर में कोई आदमी उसको स्प्रिंग को लोड कर दिया वो सर्कुलर स्प्रिंग भी होते हैं आपको पता होगा जो मैकेनिकल में बहुत होते थे जो सर्कुलर स्प्रिंग होते थे उनको आपने वाइंड कर दिया और वो दे आर अनवाइंडिंग एंड दे आर प्रोड्यूसिंग एनर्जी सम अब उसकी कैपेसिटी क्या होगी एक ये आइडिया था कि मैकेनिकली कोई आदमी उसको घर में बैठे जो इनका है उनको उन्होंने उनको लोड कर दिया एक तरह से और वो जनरेट करे एनर्जी उनके लिए जब दे नीड डिमांड करे दर वॉज जैसे घर में हर तरह का पानी इस्तेमाल होता है नहा रहे हैं शावर कर रहे हैं कुछ भी कर रहे हैं टॉयलेट है ये उसमें छोटे छोटे आपके जनरेटर लगा दिए जाए कि जैसे हमारे पन बिजली का काम होता है लेकिन अगर हम ये बहुत ही छोटे लेवल पर घरों में करने लग जाए दैट माइट not to some extent it should help them generate some kind of electricity from themselves har ghar apne ghar par aur khair solar energy ki to sabse zyada baat chalti rehti hai lekin i don't know how much uh, we can play in that because there are so many people who are doing solar panel but cheap pakistan ke liye karachi ke liye sabse bada jo masla hai wo kitne cheap aur kitne effective uh, solar panels that we can generate So th- these are a couple of things that I have been thinking so, about, but I never. Uh, so Nasar, just just from a moderation point of view, I think these are some g- great points you have. But is there a question you have for Adnan, or so, you know, I just want to formulate yeah. the question first. Yes, the question is that uh, I don't know if these are good ideas or thoughts, uh, and uh, to take it forward. Uh, and if you have any buddy who can help in that area. Uh, um and that's what i said i don't know if it is uh, laughable ideas or something <laughs> so yeah i mean I, it's an old cliche right there is no such thing as an, a bad idea there is always uh, i mean ideas and and uh being a technologist and being in r&d and and being an entrepreneur myself uh i never see any idea as a bad idea i honestly i'm not saying using saying that as a cliche i i firmly believe that and i give you a good example uh my partner with anak he wanted to make kebab out of that thing darn thing right and from kebab we are start solving a industry major industry problem right now mm-hmm. so uh, it's always good to have the ideas come up with those put it on the table let's hash it out and come up with a better solution <clears throat> uh so and whenever an idea comes to us this is how i look at it i i look at the problem how big is the problem that we're trying to solve and if the problem is real then we look at the technology solution uh does it require a lot of r and d work or the technology is already there 90% of the times today the technology is already there in bits and pieces we just need to put those technologies together and make it happen and if the risk factor from the technology is below a certain threshold then you come to the next step third step of the tool uh is a third leg of the stool and see how good your team is what do you have in the team and what is missing and whatever is missing in the team we have enough resources we can plug those gaps and almost always help you make the dream team so once the problem statement is properly validated yes the problem is real and technology risk is manageable and then the third one is your team if you have those three things in place and we can help assign a mentor who can help you make right or at least better day to day decisions the chances of success are going to be high that's not a problem that said 
in your specific case about converting the energy from the water or, or you know, the coil spring. Uh, I think today we have some, uh, we need to do some R&D work on that to see how much energy it requires to generate that energy and then reverse it back and, and utilize it. Uh, I think after, until we do that first exercise, it's going to be difficult to come up with a business plan. So, um, so do you have some expertise or, or uh, mentors in that area? Uh, I think you and I can have a side conversation. Uh, uh, I, here's what I'm going to suggest uh, in the interest of time, and there are a bunch of other questions that are there. So, Nisar, what I would suggest is you, Imran, Adnan, and we can get together separately for the, especially um, because you are thinking from the, you, you have an understanding of the problem, but the problem has to be validated, tested, and you have also have a solution of some kind. And you're looking for an expert. So we can look at, you know, in the network, there is somebody or not. So we may have to do a, a little deeper dive on that topic. And, we, you know, we can do this as a follow-up. If you guys are okay, we can actually have four or five of us get together and on a decent time, not at midnight for me. And uh, <laughs> sure. so I can do that. Uh, so I'm making a no making notes. Um, ke Imran had some interest. You had interest. So we will get together uh, sure, at some sure. point. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. thanks and man. thanks, Nisar, uh, for those questions. I have, uh, Adnan, um, some, there's some impatience there about a question that was uh, requested and I have not sort of um, ask you that question, it's in the chat. Um, what, you know, this is coming because most of the people that have talked so far are people who are experienced, whether it was Kamran Saab or Shah or Ahmed Safi or, or uh, Imran Qureshi or, you know, all the people who have been actually, you know, they are seasoned folks. But there is a lot of students folks out here who we are actually leaving. There's a huge gap in the conversation we are having and what they want to hear. What they, they don't even know what an MVP means. But they don't know what an MLP means. They don't know what a venture means. There's a there's a whole bunch of taxonomy that you wanted to actually demystify. I don't think we have done that yet. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back to that. The question that I've heard is, uh, I've gotten is that what kind of documentation you would need to engage with anybody who has an idea? Mm -hmm. So is so does TSC have an area where they can type in something? You know, you said two sentences and stuff. So if you may want to go back and share a thought, right? You, mm -hmm. you know, you had some examples, right? The level of documentation they need for you to engage with them. What is that? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the main questions. So uh -huh. I, I think that that's a very good question. Uh, I, and I, and I kind of, uh, kind of ran through, the, through that question, 90 miles an hour. Uh, my apologies for that. Adnan, we have, we are having some technical yeah, difficulties. Your video is uh, audio is hectic. If I here's the bandwidth issue, RF right now. Let me know if the we still having having some issues, uh, Adnan sir. I I think um, so okay. yeah, we should we uh, should uh, we should let me know. Sohail and stabilized. Yeah, Sohail Kamran sir. Um, and I will also try to turn off our videos because when you are streaming videos, it's actually doing that. So we may want all want to turn off the videos on the servers. Uh, Adnan, go ahead. Try this. Try again. Okay. Can you hear me now? Is it better? Yes. Yes. You. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think what we would like to do to do is. Um, my ultimate desire is the day you had the thought that this is a problem, you should come and register with us with two lines. That's all. Go to the startupcouncil.org. There's an area called the entrepreneur. Hit that area. It'll open the uh, page for you. Just enter very basic information, what your problem is, what you have done so far, and if you have done anything whatsoever, your contact information, and that's all. that's all I need. And we can we can get started with that as far as Adnan, the startup is concerned. Adnan, can as they far, actually they can can they actually put that in uh, in their local language? You know, Urdu maybe like something. 
No, not today. I, I would today. encourage you to go ahead and use the Google. Okay. Yeah, I think I would go ahead and do a translation and 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 do that. That'll be be helpful. Okay. I just uh, wanted to make sure that the the, the, the barrier. So, uh, you can, right. if as soon as they have the answer. So, what what I'm just paraphrasing here is, for people who are interested, that if you have an idea, you do satre angrezi mein likhe ke aapka problem statement kya hai jo solve karenge aap and adnan if you can actually share the problem statement an example of a problem statement how have they written i've seen some of your examples over there ah, i mean the, the same thing right i'm i'm having difficulty making kebabs my hands are dirty i cannot look at mess around with my phone when while my hands are dirty i need to come up with a solution for that okay that's a good enough reason somebody came to me and said uh, property taxes it's too complicated too difficult 80% of the people those who have those who can lower their property taxes do not apply for it because it's too complicated yeah good problem statements that's it um temur i think this question came from you originally so are you are you satisfied with that answer i, I want to add something here uh, just a minute before sure. we go <clears throat> uh in the states trying to register your company is very straightforward you just call the state you enter some basic information and pay them $200 and you are registered and ready to go uh, i think i don't know what the the procedure and the protocol is in pakistan what i would suggest we do is uh, uh, with suhail or somebody else with your organization we can uh, have a group of people those who become champions of registration and we can use that group to help yourself registered in pakistan that said I generally discourage people to doing any registration, any legal work, any documentation or anything that costs money in the beginning. Until you build your you validate your product, bring it to MVP, and when you get close to getting the revenue, at that time you start talking about all this. So you still have 3 4 months to figure all this out while you're developing the product and and we we can be engaged with you at that time and help you get there. वैसे अदनान साहब हमारे पास एक दो हैं ग्रुप्स जो के जिन्होंने अभी कराची में एक कंपनी रजिस्टर कराई है और एक और ग्रुप है जो कराना चाह रहा है और तो तैमूर बेटा ये तैमूर हमारे स्कॉलर हैं वन ऑफ द स्कॉलर्स जो अभी पढ़ रहे हैं फाइनल ईयर के अंदर हैं तो यू कैन आई थिंक वी कैन यू कैन आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन लेटर ऑन और कोई वी कैन हेल्प यू आउट और से बताया मेरा ख्याल में अदान साहब मैंने आपकी वेबसाइट के ऊपर भी एक जगह देखी है जहां पे यू कैन सबमिट योर आइडियाज एम आई राइट यस ओके दैट इज करेक्ट अरिफ देयर इज अनदर क्वेश्चन ऑन द वर सम अदर क्वेश्चन दैट यू हैव इनिशियली फ्रॉम द किड्स यस आई वाज जस्ट लुकिंग एट द डिफरेंट क्वेश्चंस अम एक्चुअली देयर आर मेनी ऑफ देम बट अम Tamur, actually, you will connect uh, separately. But what my suggestion is that when people want to actually meet with Adnan, so there is someone who said, you know, can I be connected with Adnan sir for organizational collaboration? Um, and my suggestion would be, if is if it's a business you want to start, as we just suggested, go to the startup council, go to select. You are the entrepreneur. Select that. It will give you a page. just write write a few sentences about your problem and that's how you will get connected to adnan um, or some mentor from the startup council does that make sense i think this question came from uh, one of the participants does that make sense i think uh, are you ask, asking me sorry ask, ask no 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 i'm not and i'm not asking you i'm asking i'm asking the person who asked the question who asked that question and since they asked me privately i don't want to name their names okay so i i want to take this opportunity to answer at least one question that was asked and it's a very good question i i think they should get the priority what type of personality is needed to be successful as an entrepreneur <laughs> no i think uh, adnan you sh- you should put the you should put that uh, question as the closure i would suggest there are a couple okay. more questions i have okay um i have not put the you know my questions in front because most of the people have asked the question uh, uh, is there any other that's the reason i wanted people to actually raise their hands and not just to give me text it's very difficult to me to follow 
this text. Is is anything left, Sohail, from the text that you are getting? Uh, no. Okay. No. So, <laughs> with with that said, Adnan, there was a specific question that you know mm-hmm. there are a couple of questions that typically everybody has, but you know it, it has to be formulated for you to answer. So how do I determine that my idea is not just my desire, but a need that the people will be willing to pay for? That's right. Question. So I think I, I explained that in a, in a kind of roundabout way earlier, right? Mm-hmm. First, we look at the problem. Is the problem big enough? Right. That's that's the important part. Is is this a significant problem? Uh, Fifteen, or actually thirty plus startups that we have, we have sent them back to the drawing board, and majority of them because the problem defined was not big enough, or it was too broad a stroke. And we couldn't narrow this down to uh, a technology techno- that can have a technological solution. Once the problem is agreed upon, I mean, I can, I'll give you both of these these examples, right? Uh, AR ka jo solution hai, we know the market is huge, and this is just growing. Or the property tax ka jo solution hai, it's a huge opportunity, right? So these are problems are there. The second one is you look at the technology. Is the technology there? Can we solve the problem with the current technology? Uh, I think um, Nisar Sahib asked the question, can I solve this with, with this uh, uh, small generators, micro generators and, and, and the spring coil and all that. Uh, in that case, the technology, we don't think that technology is ready right now. It will require some, some technological, uh, some research. So that creates the, the risk a little bit. And then we look at the team. So once these three things are defined and, and we, we can give a green light from all three sides, then you're pretty much good to go. And we will not do that in isolation. Yeah. 90% of this work will be done by you. We will help you guide, we will tell you what you need because you need to experience most of those things. You should not take our words. Uh, we will be right <laughs> and I'm being generous with myself and, and I'm putting just myself on a pedestal here. Maybe we are right 80% of the times. Uh, we, we can still be wrong 20% of the times. So so you need to be sure what we are saying is the right thing. And this is one of those things which goes against our tenants. Don't question them. And, and I'm totally against it. Thou shall question them everything. But so so basically what you're saying is in, in the... The, the 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 value stream phases that you had there is a validation of the idea that is done along with you so you're going to be the sounding board as well as so th- this that you know there will always be the verify part before you can go to the next step to say whether this is good enough or not or you have to go back to the drawing board so that's the answer for that right right okay so that's correct the other question that typically people have been asking is what is the difference the relationship between innovation and entrepreneurship So, a startup council is, uh, so innovation is a subset. Well, innovation itself, I mean, the, we designed this pump or the spring to generate the power that will become innovation. You take that innovation and convert that into a business to solve a problem, to solve it, that become entrepreneurship. I, uh, or the startup council, we only focus on entrepreneurship related to technology. Uh, people, those who are out there helping the community, for them, there is another need to have a similar organization like a startup council for traditional businesses. Somebody who wants to start a, a restaurant, somebody who wants to start a shop, they are also entrepreneurs. And they also need all this help what we are providing because they are not experts in those areas. The only gap is, or the difference is, they don't need, they don't have a technological risk that we are facing. That's the only difference. So, Otherwise, so in, it's in, all in, 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 in short, what you're saying, it's not necessary. You can be a me too business. It in you know, it's not an innovative solution, which means you know, there are there's enough market and there are enough players, and you're just adding yourself to that play. But you need to be an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. Still. And, and just building on that, the, what is the definition of an entrepreneur? 
somebody who sees an opportunity and and come up with creative solutions to those problems and have the tenacity and the stamina most of the people those who are not entrepreneurs what happens is the first sign of trouble they pack their bags and go home yeah. and the entrepreneur says oh this is a problem let's tighten up the belt and see how i'm going to solve the darn thing so that is that is great actually this is this was sort of a closing and we are almost at the 90 minute mark yep uh two minutes left so what i would uh, the, the last question that i had was is it good enough um to have a great idea or there are other foundational elements needed for an entrepreneur to succeed and so, you talked about the personality but what are the other things i think having a great idea and being having a curious mind is the starting point all of us and there are hundreds of problems that we have in our daily life that most of us can solve today with the technology we just need to be have the mindset that we can do it that said there need to be an effort to form the team and there need to be uh, an effort to build organizations like a startup council across the board we need to convert this startup business from being an art to science once we have a system in place we can make all of these people successful so opportunity is phenomenal we we you guys are sitting at the tip of the iceberg we are just starting this journey pakistan is a sixth populated country we are at the bottom of the totem pole anything we do is going to take us up and and growth opportunities are phenomenal <clears throat> and and i do appreciate your time thank you very much for giving me the opportunity and i'm so looking forward to working with you guys thank you very much thank you adnan and uh, thanks everyone and i'll give this back to sohail but with a parting word um you guys are you have been kind enough to be patient enough to listen for 90 minutes but remember the reason why you came here was to not just listen but just uh, to present your ideas so whether it was nisar whether whether it was ahmed whether it was temur please go in and go to the startup council put your idea there so that we can have a second leg of this stuff in a private setting with each of you guys and take the idea to the next level it might work it may not work but at least you will do your stuff and not leave it to just you know listening to us thank you i will turn it over to sohail thank you uh, arif and thank you adnan saab really appreciate uh, to all our uh, kids uh, uh, who are uh, been like make it isliye keh raha hu ki mere nad scholars ke students hain ye sare ke sare aur to inke liye sirf ye ek baat kehni hai ki jo jaise arif saab arif se aur adnan saab ne abhi aap logon ko jo pura system ko samjhane ki koshish ki hai iske andar jo ek acha bada aspect hai वो एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप uh, से पहले वो जो जब जब तक आप वो टेक्नोलॉजी और वो चीज बिल्ड अप नहीं करेंगे इनोवेशन जो पार्ट है वो नहीं आता उस वक्त तो मोस्ट प्रोबेबली जनवरी के सेकेंड वीक के अंदर हम एक uh, uh, हमारे एक और साथी हैं उनके साथ मिलके एक और प्रोग्राम किया जाएगा जो जिसके अंदर एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप का पूरा प्रोसेस जो है वो आपको समझाने की कोशिश की जाएगी और मैं फिर कहूंगा कि देर वॉर सम ग्रेट आइडियाज आई नो तूबा वॉज सपोज टू बी हेयर एंड शी शी जस्ट वेंट आउट उसको एक और क्लास में जाना था उसका कुछ आइडियाज थे और वो आइडियाज अदनान साहब बिल्कुल वैसे ही थे जैसे आपने पाकिस्तान के लिए जो एक ऐप की बात करी थी कि डॉक्टर्स को बुलाने और उसका शी इज अ वेरी यंग टैलेंटेड यंग इंजीनियर शी इज स्टिल इन द थर्ड ईयर ऑफ कॉलेज और तो उसके भी बड़े अच्छे आइडियाज थे तो मैं चाह रहा था कि वो आज आके भी डिस्कस करेगी आपसे नेक्स्ट टाइम हम रखते हैं एक और प्रोग्राम आई लाइक टू थैंक एवरी वन ऑफ यू थैंक यू इट वाज अ ग्रेट टॉक थैंक यू अदनान सम अगेन आई होप वी कैन डू दिस थिंग मोर बिकॉज यही चीज है हमारे को आगे ले जाने के लिए बजाय इसके कि हम वेट करें जॉब का हम क्रिएट करें जॉब्स को Uh, thank you again, all of you, for attending it. I know this is uh, for some places it is too early, and some others like ours it is too late. 
but thank you all hope you are have a great time and uh, hope you have learned a lot uh, if not uh, come back to us inshallah in the next seminar in the next webinar we'll learn more together so yeah on there's one other thing before you part um, i would pass you it, there's a session tomorrow at 12:30 uh, with another group in, in silicon valley mukhtar zaidi is actually uh, you know some of you might um, nisar and imran might know them so mukhtar is actually sending a note out uh, that there is a at 12:30 pm eastern which is exactly 12 hours from now uh, there is another session going on um, on similar to entrepreneurship so i'll forward you the link and you can pass it to the audience here thank you sure good shukriya bahut thank you very much everybody adnan sahab arif sohail thank you all thank, thank you all really appreciate allah hafiz allah hafiz allah hafiz